When did you first meet Coach K, P.J. Carlos? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you, you named it before when we're, when we're together on Staten Island. Mike's at uh, Army. Uh, we actually played again. I mean, I, I sat. Digger wouldn't put me in the game. I always tell Digger we'd have been better if he ever put me in a game. But um, I sat on the bench when Mike was the captain. Uh, he graduated in 70 from West Point. I graduated in 71 from Fordham. We played each other every year. But where we really met was, I, I don't think I met when he was an assistant at Indiana. It was when he was coaching West Point and I was coaching Wagner. We played twice then. Uh, and, you know, that's in the mid-70s, and we've been very, very good friends. We coached a number of USA teams together uh, back in uh, 80 in the uh, World Championship or 90 uh, in Buenos Aires. Him, myself, Jim Beheim, and Joe Harrington were on a staff together, and Mike included me coaching a select team on his first two, I think, Olympic teams. I would coach the young guys. So we're Really, really close for a lot, a lot of years, obviously. Uh, when you, when uh, we start talking about how old we are and we start with a seven, you know we're, we've been around for a long time. <laughs> so you first kind of met Mike Krzyzewski when you played against each other and then you coached against each other. He's at West Point. You're in Staten Island, New York, and Grimes Hill's finest institution of higher learning, Wagner College. <laughs> and, and, so, and, and then what was it like coaching Olympic teams with him, PJ? What was that like? It was fantastic. Uh, first of all, he's inclusive. He's great with his staff. Uh, I mean, he welcomes um, input. The fact that he and I forgot to mention this, how dumb I am. Um, I forgot to mention 92. Where yeah. We were both lucky enough to be assistants on the Dream Team. Yeah, yeah that one. Daly, <laughs> that one. Wilkins. Yeah. Oh, that little summer uh, yeah. in Barcelona um, <laughs> that we spent together. And it's really a family thing, Rich, honestly. Like, I've known Mickey and his girls for so long uh, when they were young. And I mean, you know, now the grandkids. So it's a. Uh, it's amazing for us to be together, but Mike hasn't changed. Mike is exactly who he was uh, from the uh, Polish family that he was raised in, Catholic Polish family in Chicago. He has not varied uh, too much, to be honest with you. Uh, he's, he's varied in terms of how he handles his players. He handles the so-called modern guy better than most of us old dinosaurs. But in terms of his coaching philosophy, in terms of his family philosophy, and, and how he is with, with his beliefs, he has not changed very much at all. Did you at any, truly hasn't. Did you at any point in that dream team look at, I mean, because, again, you guys had accomplished so much and Coach K accomplished so much, um, look at each other and go, this is, this, is the most, this is the wildest thing of all time at any uh, point? Yeah, there? from day one. Honestly, when the first meeting we had, we, we uh, had training camp, if you will, mm -hmm. at, U, at uh, U, UCSD. We practiced in UC San Diego's gym. Uh, we stayed at that hotel that sits on top of Torrey Pines, um, the golf course, which we didn't get to play, unfortunately. But um, <laughs> w when Chuck called the first meeting, it was like 7 or 7.30 the first night, the night before we started practice, and those guys started walking in the room. Now, I knew some of them from Nike because um, a bunch of them had been with Nike and on Nike trips, the Nike coaches trip, like Michael and Charles and uh, Patrick Ewing and Chris Mullen I had coached against in the Big East. But I had never met Birdie. I had never met John Stockton. I had never met Carl Malone. When they walked in the room, I mean, it was only like 15 or 16 of us in the room. When they started walking in, you were like, whoa. Uh, I mean, it was literally, I think, the best basketball team ever put together. Uh, and you had guys at different levels of their career. Some of them were getting toward the end. Some of them were in their prime. There was actually a couple that were still, you know, younger and just, you know, becoming the superstars that they would become. But, I mean, it had to blow. I don't care who it was. It had to blow you away. It probably even affected uh, Chuck and Lenny. I mean, as great as those two are, and Lenny was as a player and as a coach, when those guys kept walking in the door, you're going, wow, this is, this is our team? Are you kidding me? Uh, it, was, it was remarkable. The only time you see guys like that is at a, a cocktail party at the Hall of Fame That's right. uh, before or after the induction. <laughs> These guys were coming in for a team meeting, and we were going to start practice the next day with the 12 of them. It was a little bit different. And were you guys, at, you and Coach K in charge of uh, Leitner as well? Like the, um, on the home? Christian was my guy. I had a nickname for Christian. I can't say it on, on this network. I, I, I want to continue <laughs> to work for Coach Denneroff, but I've known Christian a long time. And, and uh, you know, Charles befriended him. Charles was really good to him. Charles kind of took him under his wing uh, and, and made sure that, you know, he wasn't just treated like the, you know, the college guy on the team and all that. He, he was really good. But um, Mike, you know, did a lot. If Mike was running the transition break drill, which he's run ever since he was in coaching, probably started with uh, with with Coach Knight at uh, at Indiana or at Indiana at Army. 
Um, but I was in charge. I had golf tee times. I had restaurant. I had a lot of, re- you know, a lot of important things that I had to do. Uh, Michael needed, needed a golf. Charles needed a restaurant. But um, it was funny, Rich. Honestly, we would get to a place and we bumped around. People forgot we went from San Diego to Portland because we had to qualify. You know, there was different type of qualification in those days. But we didn't win the gold medal in '88 in Seoul, so we had to qualify at the Tournament of the Americas in Portland. So we played six or seven games uh, in Portland. Then we reconvened for a day in Newark. Uh, and then we went to Monte Carlo to train for a week before we went to Barcelona. And each time we would get to a place, honestly, um, David Robinson was rehabbing, so he'd be looking for a track so he could run. I forget what the injury was, but he was rehabbing his knee. Carl always wanted to know where he could lift. Birdie, uh, Michael, Patrick, surprised. and I hadn't realized, because Patrick was not a great shooter when he was at Georgetown. They would want to know when they could get in the gym and get extra shots up. And, they, like, it struck me, like, as great as that team was, if we got there before or people stayed after practice, the guys that stayed were like Molly, Patrick Ewing, uh, you know, the, the shooters, like the guys who shot the ball, MJ, the, the guys who were the good shooters. Even on that team, the other guys would go do whatever they were doing. But the great shooters wanted to know, where's their gym? Where can I get the extra shots up? Male, Carl always wanted to know, where's their weight room? I, like, I got to lift every day. Uh, it was really impressive to see, uh, you know, those guys were so good at their craft, but how they did the extra things that made, you know, each of them in their, in their different ways special. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.